Hello, my name is Brittany D. I am a psychic medium and spiritual teacher. My divine purpose is to assist in the expansion of the collective consciousness and to help you become more connected with the divine. This is a space to remember all that you truly are and ignite the possibilities of your highest potential. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for joining today. I am grateful to be here with you in this present moment. Today, I am so excited to share with you all a beautiful, beautiful being named Chrissy Lister. She is going to be sharing uh, her view and perspective on creativity. Now, Christy is an incredible artist, and I highly recommend you go check out her work. Uh, I'm going to leave it up to her to tell you where to find that, Um, but I'm so excited to have this guest here. She is just an incredible human being. Feel the vibes. Just dive into it because this is going to be so good. Um, So thank you so much for being here, Christy. I really appreciate you being here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, Yeah. excited. (laughs) All right. So um, as far as the creative journey, you know, for people and um, what, what, you know, the creative people, like we were kind of talking about a little bit um, prior to, to, to the actual podcast um, about create creation and creative energy. It's, it's happening all the time. It's all around us and it's not in these specific categories. So let's just dive into that. Let's talk about that. What's your perspective? You know, I think a lot of people, and then we were just chatting a little bit about this before we came on. Um, a lot of people feel like a big block to creativity. Like it's something that's maybe not reachable for them if they're not, um, an artist or a writer or, musician or they don't, you know, do craft or garden or cook, like, like as if those are the only ways that you can actually use your creativity, which is totally untrue. (laughs) Um, You are creative every single moment of the day, every breath you uh, create, every breath you take, you're creating, like you're creating life within your body. You're actually like bringing the creative, you know, force of the universe of God into your body with every breath. So every single person is creative, like abundantly creative. It's just, I feel like a lot of people feel the block because they don't see themselves as some label, like an artist or a musician. So um, one of the things that I think is really a good perspective to think about, first of all, is that um, it is within the divine nature of ourselves to be creators. Mm -hmm. I mean, God created everything, right? God is the like one infinite creator. And creator is, is in us. It's, it's our own energy. (laughs) It is exactly what we are. It's everything that we are. Um, we seek to create all the time and we're constantly challenged to create. So every single time, any challenge that comes into your life, you're, you're stopped in that moment to come up with some sort of solution to come up with any idea that can help you sort of Uh, navigate your way through the challenge. I think something that's happening a lot right now, especially, um, is that people are becoming so challenge focused that they're forgetting how amazing they are and how how Mm -hmm. they are fully capable of getting through any challenge. They Mm -hmm. always have gotten through every challenge. And the only way they've done that is through being creative. Mm-hmm. because you're creating oh. an action with every single thing you're doing. Oh, so, so good. <laughs> so when you start to think about that, it's actually pretty amazing. Like everybody's creative and there's no need to prove it. Right. But mm-hmm. I think a lot of people, and this is one of the things about artists, I can speak as an artist is um, artists deal with self judgment a lot. I know everybody does, but I think when you're creating something to go put it out to the world, before you even show it to anybody, you're constantly judging it. Like, oh gosh, is this good enough? Well, and, yeah. and, you know, any craft, like I, I do that Anything. to myself, you know, yeah. like I'm like, oh, is this, you know, is this podcast going to be good? And, you know, all those yeah, kinds of things. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. no. <laughs> yeah. And there's no such thing. Right. That's, that's the funniest part. So <laughs> it is good to sort of like get uh, into a hobby. I think hobbies are like wonderful. And a lot of people, you know, my brother would kill me for saying this, but he's like, he's like one of these people who, um, 
will want to be awesome at something right away because he is a naturally talented and creative person. So he'll pick up something. And if he's not like awesome at it right away, he'll, he'll be like, Oh, I give up. I don't want to do this. Like, it's like, and it's like what you lost the whole point of why you wanted to start to draw or paint or anything is because you just really wanted to express yourself. Mm -hmm. So when we drop the judgment, you're like, Oh, this is so much fun. Like, like when you're a child, you don't judge your finger paintings. Mm. Like you think you're awesome. You're like, look what I did, you know? Mm -hmm. So when I was in university, I had this really amazing prop. And she said to me one day, because I was kind of like really down on myself, even though I was naturally talented, you know, I still needed a lot of work. And she's like, you know what? You need to learn how to fall in love with your work. Mm. Even if it's not your best work, you know, Mm. even if it's not something that you put in your portfolio, every single thing you do, is a part of your process. You get to actually see yourself grow. Can we can we just pause for a second? Because that is like <laughs> powerful, holy, yeah. holy shit, powerful yeah. medicine right there. Like it is. If you think about that with everything that you do, if you know, if you burn your eggs, you're making some like amazing like breakfast, and then you burn it. You, there's no point in getting mad at it. You know what I mean? You're like, wow, I just learned how not to burn my eggs. <laughs> you know? It's kind of hilarious. You know, if you do everything through love, if you're falling in love with everything that you're doing, everything you're doing is through love. It can't be wrong. It can't be bad. There's no such thing as bad when it comes to love. You know what I mean? It's like, it's always a good thing. So falling in love with what you're doing is super important in creativity. And you know it, like when you're in the zone, when you're being creative, you're not even thinking anymore. Mm-hmm. Like you're not, you're not trying, you're not judging yourself. You're just, I like to call it art trance. Like mm-hmm. you get into this like trance state. It's like a deep meditation. And you're just like almost watching yourself doing what you're doing and being like, whoa. <laughs> well Whoa, and it's like like what you were saying about that falling in love in it like when you were saying that I was just like melting into that because it's just if you really want to be happy and if you really want to feel fulfilled you got to really start falling in love with all of it like yes. when you were talking about the eggs I remember this experience um I actually wrote a post about it and um you know, we were making some dish or something and I had to walk away because I had a call and then I came back and it was just, it was made with spaghetti noodles instead of the pad thai noodles. And I was like, what the hell? Oh, I remember you know? that. Yeah. <laughs> remember and that then time. at first I was, you know, I'm all in my ego, I'm all upset. And I'm like, this wasn't what it was supposed to be and blah, blah. And then I tasted it and I was like, this is amazing. Now I can like only bring spaghetti noodles when I go camping. Like there's so many positive things about that experience. But initially I was judging it and I was like, this wasn't my creation that I was trying to create, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's, it's really that same thing. Just fall in love with it, fall into it, you know, not all the resistance. (laughs) You know what? And sometimes one thing that I've learned, cause I used to really try to control Uh, my paintings. Like I had an idea, I was going to go for that idea. And I would fight my way through my idea. Like it was like fighting my way through it. Mm -hmm. And it was always, I used to be a fashion illustrator before I really got into doing more spiritual art. And all of my illustrations were very tight, like stiff. They weren't comfortable to look at. They were technically good, but they were stiff. And eventually along the way, I just gave up. I was like, okay, I don't know where this is going. Surrender. And this is kind of a perfect, (laughs) yeah, you got to surrender. And this is perfect for life in general. It's like, if you hold on to the reins of your life so tight, you might miss like the beautiful turn, you know, that like side rows where you're going to find a gorgeous pond. You're not going to see the, all the little mysteries that life has. And in art, in my paintings, I found that that was the only way that I could work. Mm -hmm. The minute I stopped feeling that channel, the inspiration, I have to stop. Mm -hmm. Even if it means it's going to take my painting six months to get finished, Mm -hmm. I would rather it be what it's supposed to be and have time to ruminate within me before I get back to it. You can't fight your way through creativity. It doesn't work that way. You just have to be open to it all of the time. Always be open to it. 
That's so just like life though too. Like that, that's, yeah. and, it, and it's because it's all creation. It's all creative yeah. force. And that's why it can be, you know, you can put it in life's, um, you know, circumstances as well, because it's like, if you're not, I like, I am, I would, at least I would like to think that I'm in a really, really deep state of surrender because I've learned too many times that the divine has the plan down and my idea is not, <laughs> it doesn't work out quite as well as the divine plan. And like you said, like if you don't surrender to that, then those little, those little pathways, those little quick right turns where those gorgeous flowers or that gorgeous experience or whatever it may be is awaiting you. If you don't surrender to that, then you, then you miss it and you go, you, you, you know, it's, it's like you go where you're ego wants to go not exactly not where the the what where the true magic and the miracles lie mm-hmm. you know exactly but that's hard sometimes like it's oh, you know we can hard. talk about it here sitting here but that this can be really really difficult to be like are you sure you want me to go that way like are yeah. you positive yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. it's funny because i was watching this really uh great video uh, with Lori Ladd. I'm not sure if you oh, her love Lori Ladd. Yeah. yeah. And she was just talking about this like yesterday. And she was talking about being the river. Like you're the river. You're mm-hmm. going to hit the stone, the mm-hmm. big boulder along the way. The boulder is the challenge. Now you can hold on to that boulder for dear life if you want. So be so focused on it. Or you can just see it. Stop trying to move it out of the way and just be like, okay, I'm just going to surrender to this boulder. It's fine. Mm-hmm. I'm going to roll off of it what do I choose next? Mm -hmm. What's the next option for me? Where do I want to be in this now moment? And I love that so much because that is the act of creation. You're making your life with every single moment. You are creating it. Mm -hmm. You are co-creating this experience with every single person and you get the choice. So you see something really, really negative on Facebook or Twitter or wherever. And it, it, like hurts you a little, you know, you feel that like that twinge inside and you're like, Oh, I don't like this. You can just accept and say, you know what, this is where people are at. This is what's happening. But right now I can check back into my body, pull myself back into my body, back into the frequency and be like, I am here to hold this frequency. I'm creating this light for everybody. I can shine this light for everybody. And so when I create that light, I'm creating the light. Other people will see it and be like, oh, you know what? If she can create the light, I can create some light too. I don't need to choose to be angry. Mm -hmm. I can just recognize my anger and be like, oh, I don't like that. That really does bother me. Mm -hmm. But I also, you know, have this wonderful thing going on in my life and I'm in the middle of this really great project or I had this great conversation with my friend on the phone yesterday. You know, you can suddenly just shift back into the frequency that you actually hold. Like we're all holding this amazing light. The light Mm -hmm. is coming in like Mm -hmm. always. So we get to hold it if you choose to. So the choice, creativity is just the choice. Well, and I think too, it's important that whenever you do have that anger to be like, okay, I'm angry right now. I I honor that, you know? (laughs) And then that's how you can move through it to invite that light back in. You know, mm-hmm. because we are human and we're not going to be light all the time. And, you know, that, that's just part of it. But in order to have that, you know, I know that because I know you, I know that you're really good at allowing those emotions to move through you. So that's why it's always, always ever available um, to allow that light back in. But I think it's important to just, you know, take a moment to recognize that it's okay to be angry and you're allowed to be triggered by that post, maybe figure out why, you know. Um, But then Mm -hmm. once you feel that and you're like, okay, I honor that. This is why. And now I know. And and now I can, you know, move back into that creation energy of light, you know. Exactly. I mean, and a big part of all of this is that we are feeling things so much more now because we're sort of just embodying ourselves more. Mm-hmm. Like the more we become ourselves, the more we learn, the more we are in our body, the more we're going to feel it. Now you can try get out and try reason with it with your mind. If you, ch- if you want to, you can try to make sense of everything if you want to, or you can just accept the feeling of it and be like, why this doesn't feel very good. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't need to sit in that though. Like, it's not like, oh, this horrible feeling came in and I need to sit in it and understand why I'm feeling it and all of the reasons. Like we get so stuck in the why Mm -hmm. as opposed to being like, okay, yeah, 
Oh, right. hands in the air. You are a preaching <laughs> girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's true because if you live, like just you in just a state accept of surrender, it. you, you know? just surrender. You just yeah. accept it. You're like, yeah. And I think a lot of people really misinterpret that. They mm-hmm. think that when you're in surrender, you're just allowing everything to happen and you're not trying to do anything about it. And that's mm-hmm. not true. Mm-hmm. Creativity is about doing stuff. Creativity mm-hmm. is the act of doing and creating something. Mm-hmm. So you, you surrender to your feeling, whatever it is, you surrender to it. You're like, okay, yeah, I don't, I don't like that. So what's the opposite of that? How can I just like move into the opposite? You know, I got in an argument with family member. Okay. What can I do? I'm not ready to talk to them just yet. So I'm going to go talk to somebody that I love, not about the family member, <laughs> but just about something that's going to actually bring me back to myself help me release that energy a little bit. Then I'm back in my own self and I can go back to the family member and create a new Mm -hmm. path between us because Mm -hmm. the last one was a little damaged. So I'm going to create a new path with them so that we can keep moving forward together. You don't have to cut people out. So so I'm curious, is that, is that kind of what you feel like happens when you were talking about with your paintings, how you have to come back to, is it kind of that same, I, I, I am getting into creation, but as an artist, you know, full time, this is what you do. Is that, is that when you have to step back from a painting and come back to, is it kind of that same energy? It's exactly that. Okay. It's absolutely exactly that. You can be, yeah, it's exactly that when you're, and I think it depends on, on how you're creating because you can be creative. And I was actually uh, a really amazing artist. Her name is Amanda Joy. She creates uh, pottery. She's also an amazing painter. But she was talking about how she was going through some really heavy emotions recently. And she um, glazed all these mugs that she was working on. And you can actually see the emotion in the glaze. And she's like, when I looked at it, I was like, wow, I really like put that in there. And she was talking about how she used to... Um, only create from that space. And a lot of people do, they get upset or angry and they're like, Mm -hmm. Oh, I need to get this emotion out. So I'm going to paint or draw. I'm going to write poetry, you know, create some art and like really get this heavy emotion out through being creative. But you actually have that opportunity with everything. So something I wanted to share with you um, is that I am actually right now in the midst of uh, taking a creative course. It's a six week course. Uh, It's called the creative course. And um, each week we have a lesson and, you know, she goes through different things and, and, um, and then we have an assignment that we do in the class. And then we have a home, a take home homework. And it's so amazing. It is so amazing that as soon as I started this course, the level, like just being like, okay, I'm committed to my creation, like as a, as a creator in my life, but also in creating my work and in my channeling and, you know, the, the courses that I create and the things that I, um, you know, am bringing forth for the collective, um, just making sure to be, as, you know, as clearly connected with the creator, I feel like is very related to creation. So I was like, okay, let's hone in on this. And As soon as I really committed to that, you know, emotionally, mentally, financially, energetically, my time, and then started the course, it was amazing how much creation was just as recently started pouring through me. And I didn't even think of ways like, like, like you said, like I had always pictured it as like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to maybe I'll start painting or pick up my photography again or whatever it may be like these categories. And, and then I realized like, I'm literally walking down the street and I'm like, I I made up, I'm literally just like walking down the street and I made up a children's song. Like it just came pouring through me. (laughs) And yeah, it was crazy. I'm like, wow, I've I've had it in this limited box of these things. Like I want to be able to paint. So like, of course that's on my mind, but it can come through in so many different ways. And like, now I'll just say like random things. And, and like, I don't know, it's like, I don't even know what I'm really saying, but then it's like funny or it's like, I don't know, like, I don't get it, but it just comes through me and I'm actually allowing it, like bringing it Mm -hmm. back to that thing Mm -hmm. you were saying, like not judging it. Like it was like, I was judging it. And um, like, here, I want to tell you my, my, uh, my children's song. (laughs) <laughs> oh yay. Okay. Yeah, do it. So um uh I don't even know. I I was just like chilling. Like it I it just I just said it, but it was like I said, roll over for me. 
and do the honky wonky dance. And like, I don't even, <laughs> isn't that the yeah. oddest thing? Yes. But then you say it. it three times in it. a row and it's actually really fun. And like a kid yeah. would make a little dance. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I was like, wow, that's, that's like, that's like actually a children. That could be a children's song. Like I could see uh, yeah. like a bunch of kids doing a little, like, you know, rolling on the ground, roll over for me. And then like do the honky. <laughs> but had I judged that in that moment, like Brittany, what the hell are you talking about? Honky, <laughs> monkey dance. Yeah, you know what I mean? Exactly. I, then I wouldn't have, that wouldn't have came through. And now it's like a funny joke in the house. And like, mm-hmm. whenever you want to lighten the mood, we're like, roll over for me. <laughs> <laughs> but had I judged that in that moment, it wouldn't have came through, you know, and there's all different songs and all these random things ever since I opened the portal really consciously coming through me. And, and like you said, like if, if I judge it, then it, then I block it. That's where I cut it off. Exactly. Yeah. And and that's the big thing. You don't want to be in judgment. Like, I think that's one of the things we're really learning right now, right? Is like, don't judge each other. Mm-hmm. Don't judge yourself. Mm-hmm. Don't judge yourself. And, um, The thing about creativity is all being creative is just channeling. You're just in a state of channeling. Mm -hmm. If you stop making it about you, right? Mm -hmm. This is the ego. The ego wants my painting to be awesome. So people love it and think I'm a great painter. Mm -hmm. It's not about me at all. Something wants to come through. I just am blessed enough that for some reason along the way, it comes naturally to me. Like I just know how to make it happen. Or maybe I don't even know how to make it happen. I don't know. I, I'm totally a self-taught painter. And, um, but I think it's really important to just, just be in, and when you're in the state of allowing, you come up with the most beautiful things. Mm-hmm. You're so connected. You find these like little bits of joy. And it's funny, even coming up with like a children's song, like being creative is the very first thing you really learn. It's the first thing you learn. It's how you, it's right. how you connect to other people, right? Oh, wow. It's how you, it's how you relate. You learn things in song when you're a child, you know, you learn mm-hmm. how you learn about life's lessons through stories. Mm-hmm. Somebody doesn't come up to you and say, okay, I'm going to teach you about the world. They're like, you know, create a little song. Right. They create a little story. They, they create a little book with beautiful little characters. Or like how you learn your numbers or like exactly. the ABC, you know, like all that stuff. It's like, th- that's how you're, that's how we program it is like yes. through that creative energy. Absolutely. Wow. It's like, Absolutely. it's almost like, it's like, I'm almost seeing it as like, you know, cause we're the creator inside. So it's like programming the creator with creation. I don't know. It's really interesting. Yeah. Like where my mind's going right now. Well, the thing is, I think the more you get in touch with your creativity, the more comfortable you are even just being childlike. And childlike Mm -hmm. is being in a state of wonderment. And the more wonder you actually bring into yourself, the more creative you are. Because everything's amazing. You look at a tree, you're like, you don't just look at a tree and see green and, and brown. You know, that's not all you see. You see every texture. You see the light coming through the tree. You see the veins on the leaves. You see the bark and how it's sort of knotted in one section. And you see the roots growing into the ground and how there's weeds at the bottom. You don't just see a tree anymore. Or hear what or hear what the tree has to say to you. Like yes. that's me. I'm like, I'm like, what's your message? You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or even just get quiet with the tree and, and mm-hmm. you connect with the energy of it. You sit there and wonder, like, what have you seen? Mm-hmm. And when you get into the wonderment stage, then your mm-hmm. channel's completely open because you're just accepting. You're like, okay, what's coming through? Like, this is so cool. I get to be with this tree. I get to do whatever I'm doing. Mm-hmm. It, you know, so we get out of the judgment in wonderment. So being in wonder, and that's really about connecting with your child. And that's why, you know, doing all the inner child healing, all of that's really important. Mm -hmm. And why I think a lot of people are starting to turn to the arts a little bit more without judging, like the whole paint and pour classes, you know, starting to write poetry again. Oh, yeah, true. People are getting into it. They're not judging themselves so much. They're learning some basic techniques, Mm -hmm. right? So that they can do it Mm -hmm. without judging. But at the same time, they get to just have a bit of fun. And the fun, so fun, creativity, wonderment, all of these things, they come from being in your childlike state, going mm-hmm. back to the innocence and you just get back into that place of wonderment because mm-hmm. that's your most natural state. That is our natural state. Everything else, all the fears, 
that stuff that you learn. Yeah, yeah. and I want, and I also wanted to say, um, uh, with the wonder, I almost, to me, I almost, whenever I hear wonder, hear the word wonder, I almost associate it immediately in my brain with curiosity because mm-hmm. it's almost like you kind of have to be curious enough to wonder about this, whatever this is, you yes. know, but not, not go too deep into the why. Just yes. curious. It's not Just about why. Not, yeah. yeah. It's like literally never about why, mm-hmm. right? Like it really doesn't matter. And I think now that we're sort of shifting more into feeling, we're starting to get more comfortable with ourselves, you know, kind of detaching ourselves from the why is sometimes the hardest part. Mm-hmm. You know, people are so uh, attached to science, for example. It's like, it's super interesting. Like, you know, learning about the intricacies of matter. Let's mm-hmm. say. However, if you're so devoted to scientific, scientific fact, you lose your sense of wonderment mm-hmm. because everything has to have a reason. But some things we would never be able to understand. We would never, it doesn't matter how smart we are right. in this consciousness where we are in this body, we don't have access to that. Mm-hmm. You know, we're not in that dimension yet. We don't, we don't need to know that lesson yet. Right. So being in wonder is being open channel all of the time saying there's so much out there and just being like in complete awe of that fact. And that there's so much, if there's so much without you, right, everything without is within and within is without. So there's, there's so much out there. Gosh, there's so much oh, within us. Truth. So if we sit there and wa- wonder why all the time, well, I need it. I need an answer. I need an explanation. You have to prove this to me. You've totally lost. You're lost in the plot. Like uh-huh. you're totally lost in the plot as opposed to just waiting to see where the story's going. Right. And that's and I, the fun part. Yeah. And, fun and part. I, and I do believe, like, I do believe in my heart that those people, those scientists that are really on the front edge, especially with, you know, the stuff, stuff nowadays, that's mm-hmm. their purpose. That's their calling, of course. you know? Yes. So I'm like, I'm like, like, I actually said this on a previous podcast. I was like, I don't even dive into the why. Like, I don't even know. That's not, I'm yep. like, I was like, I'm sure there's scientists out there that are figuring that out and that's their yep. purpose, but that's mine is job. not. Yes. And you know what? Most people, like the average person, that's not their job either. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Right. And it's okay. Like it's it's so, it's good to be interested. It's good to be curious. And if you want to know what they're doing, absolutely go jump in. If you're, if you're interested in that, that's where you're being called to learn about those things. For sure, go for it. Mm-hmm. But the point is, if you get so caught in needing to know, you'll just get caught in needing to know forever. The oh. rabbit hole has no bottom. Oh you goodness. always go, go down the rabbit hole. And if you even think about that analogy, when you go down the rabbit hole, you're going down. You're going okay. down from consciousness. You're going down yeah. deep into your thoughts. Mm-hmm. You're going down into needing to know. So it's bringing you down as opposed to elevating you. You don't right. need to go in the rabbit hole for a bit, but make sure you can always reach the back out again. Yeah. Bring yourself back up. So I'm curious if, uh, you know, as an artist, do you have any recommendations whenever you, if you're catching yourself going down the rabbit hole, is there a way to channel that creative energy to another, to another place? Do you have any, um, Absolutely. Kind of tools? You know what I think the most, one of the first things that I realized when I sort of first started awakening, I had two awakenings. I had my first awakening was, I call it my small awakening. And it was like into all the conspiracy theories and like, <laughs> you know, all the the dark stuff out there. And I stayed there for so long because like I said, the rabbit hole has no bottom. Mm. Um, I went through cancer experience. And when I was going through that, I had my big awakening and it was like, it's all temporary here. It doesn't matter. There will always be more there. The dark, there's always, it's infinite. You Mm -hmm. think about space, it's infinite, Mm -hmm. but the light, I mean, it, it just, it holds so much more for transformation mm. that I want to go there instead. Mm-hmm. So I will look at the dark. It's good. You got to do the shadow work. You have to look at yourself. You have to work on those things, but do it in the place where you're like, oh, I need to bring myself back to the right. good self. I got to go back to, to return you gotta to return to one of the things that I learned early on before I had my big awakening. Um, I was a very depressed person. I struggled with depression a lot and anxiety. So I went and saw a uh, psychologist and she told me that you can retrain your neural pathways. You have a, a negative thought, 
you just go to the positive thought of whatever that is, even if you don't believe it. So if you say, oh, I'm so dumb, I can't believe I said that. You're like, oh my God, I'm so smart because of this. Even if you don't believe it in the moment. So even just learning that, that's how I flip the switch. I call it just flipping the switch. You can be in that negative place. You have to learn how to recognize that you're there and recognize that it's you that's Mm -hmm. there. If nobody else is putting you there, the circumstance of the world isn't forcing you there. You've made the choice to be there, right? Yeah. So you get to make the choice out of it. Yeah. So you have to stop the spiral. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to stop the spiral for you. You got to stop your own spiral. So you'd be like, oh my God, I'm spiraling. Okay. I recognize the spiral now. I'm not judging the spiral. See, it's happening. What can I do in this moment to make it stop? I'm not going to feel bad about it. I'm not going to judge myself for it, but I need to stop. So if that means I need to go try something new, get outside. Me is getting outside. Like whenever I feel like I really need to like release maybe some pent up heavy energy. It's like, I got to go outside, find me a tree, find me some grass. And I feel like instantly better. That works Mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. Maybe for everybody, that's not their thing, but you have to be actively trying to find your thing all the time. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't, if you haven't found it yet, that only means you haven't found it quite yet. It's Mm -hmm. there. Everybody has their thing. So if you like to write, if you like to record yourself, record yourself. That was one of the most powerful things I did during my cancer experience was I would start to feel very low and down and scared, obviously. And I didn't want to put that on everybody because they were already feeling their own emotions around what was Mm -hmm. happening with me. Mm -hmm. So I would go on my phone, I would open up the voice recorder And I would rant at my phone. I would just rant and rant and rant. Mm -hmm. And then I would listen to it. And if I needed to cry it out, I just cried it out. And I really Mm -hmm. sat with that emotion. I allowed myself to feel it. If I needed to cry it out, I went there. And it's just like, you know, after you have a really good cry, you feel better. You just, you let it go. So sometimes you have to find a way that part of being creative is always seeking You have to seek the answer. You have to seek the opportunity. They don't just pop up to you in life. You have to be seeking it all the time and believe it's there. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Belief and faith and all that is just so, so massively huge. Um, That's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So basically you have to really be open to seeking the opportunity and keep the faith that it's there. Mm -hmm. That's, that's so important. Creativity, uh, really, again, it's very creativity is, you know, (laughs) rooted in everything, but you have to have the faith that it's there because that's what we are. We are made of creativity. We're made of love. And so, uh, if you lose the faith, that's when, that's when you have a harder time getting yourself out of the spiral, but it's always possible. I feel, I feel a little bit called just to explain that just a little bit in case we have a listener that's not exactly getting what we're saying. I know that we get what we're saying, but I just want to make sure where we get. Absolutely. So, so creator, the creator of all universes, right? Is creator energy, Mm -hmm. which is creation, life force energy. And life force creation energy is running through everything at all times. So that's why everything is creation and AKA creating creativity. It's all one big flowing energy. Absolutely. Um, And, and um, it, it, I mean, really it's, it's the most important energy that in my opinion, it's the most important energy in, in our experience. Um, And so that's why, you know, taking the creative curve, course and doing the things to really get in alignment with my creation. And because it, it, and in the creative course, like it, it brought up a lot of like blocks that I had, like judgments of myself and yes. my create and my creations, like, like, like as if, if I created something and, and maybe I didn't think that it was super, like, for example, whenever I, I like made this, this painting, right. And, and we do kind of like a show and tell thing. And, and so then, uh, so I, you know, I, I showed my little project. I, I, it's actually a page that we posted on. And then in the next class, a girl, it, well, she, well, first off, let me back up a little bit. She shared hers on the same, on the same page. Mm-hmm. And I remember looking at it and being like, oh my God, like 
that I we don't know each other's names because it's all just by Instagram profiles and whatnot. It's too confusing. It's not like a name name. So, and I just saw it and I was like, oh my god, like that's amazing. Like I wish mine would have been that creative. And mm-hmm. I kid you not, we get on the call, and she goes. Yeah, whenever I saw Britney's painting, I was like, oh man, I'm not going to make anything that's like as cool as that. And then, <laughs> she, and then she shows hers and I was like, are you freaking kidding me? That was yours? Like, I'm over here like, oh my God, yours is amazing. You're over here like, yeah. that's, you know, we just judge ourselves. And it's like, it's, isn't that funny how you it, guys were your, each other's mirrors? Mirrors. Like, exactly. Exact so mirrors. Wow. Yeah, it was wow. beautiful. It was a beautiful lesson. You know, yes. it was a beautiful yeah. like showing like, I'm over here thinking that she's like amazing and like I can't even, you know, get on her level. And she's over here thinking the same thing. The I'm like, same wow, thing. it's literally just judgment of self. Like no one's as better or worse. Like it's literally just perspective and judging myself and my creation. <laughs> and so I had to move through that block, you know, like that was my mirror in that class. That is that specific week. That was my mirror of like, okay, let's, so let's stop with the judgment thing because that's totally perspective based. Yes, exactly. And I honestly believe that uh, as human beings, where we're at sort of this sort of three dimensional reality, third dimensional reality, I think probably our biggest lesson is to learn how to be creators. Every dimension below us, they create, you know, they'll create life, they'll build their beaver dam, you know, whatever. But they, they're not doing it out of the joy of being creative, they're doing it out of necessity. Mm -hmm. We actually are now being creative. Like, look what we can do. We build skyscrapers, like, Mm -hmm. and and, like write arias, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like we are so creative. So we're the first on, in the dimension, no reality where you're actually creating from the joy of creation. And and that's why it's so important to practice creativity all the time. Recognize that you're being creative because you are learning now how to be, how to even tap into the divine creator. This is, this is a proof positive that you are closer to source than you've ever been before. Mm-hmm. The more creative you allow yourself to be, the more you just accept that you are a divine creator yourself. Mm-hmm. We live in a fractal universe. We're all just emanations of God. Mm-hmm. So this is our first time, right? We're just taking off the training wheels. This is our first time where we actually get to practice being the divine creator. Mm. so I think that's so important yeah and I think I think too like um you know I I didn't realize how much of it was really you know until this course I didn't realize how much of it was really and truly channeling like I had always thought that it was my creation and then then like and then like once I stepped aside I was like it's not even really my creation. Like this is just coming through me. Like that song, yes. that children's yeah. song. I, yes. I did not think of that. Like that was not me at all. And there's been multiple things. Like that's just one that's like kind of a joke in the house. So like it sticks out. Yeah. But there's been all kinds of things. And I just say it now or I just do it now. Like I don't think about it. Like I'm not like, oh, should I say it? Like it's like, no, just let it come through. And then what? Oh, oh gosh, it's out. Like who, who cares? Like, who gives a shit if it, it what it, what happens after that? Like, I want to let it move through me first and then I'll deal with whether I want to do something about that. If I want to repeat it again, if I want to make it a joke, if I want to, you know, like whatever we can do that after, but like just allowing yes. it, that step of just allowing it to channel and move through me has been the shift that I've experienced. And and not only has it been like, you know, like uh, allowing that, you know, less blockages and allowing more creation move through me, but it's freaking fun. Yes. I have a great time now. Like I'm not judging these random things that come through me. Like it's just like I'm, you know, skipping through the forest and I'm like, blah, 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 you know, and I don't judge. Like <laughs> you just say whatever. And it's like way more fun. It's so much more loose and free, you know, it's kind of almost like a way of living. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. And the thing is, is um, once you have that happen, you know, your, your channel is open. You, it, it's also a lesson in stepping outside your ego. Just like you said, like, mm-hmm. oh, I created this thing. Now I need to do something with it. Well, you don't. Mm-hmm. You don't. Mm-hmm. That's not why we create is to make a business out of it or to do anything out of it. Like being, once we actually step away from it and say, you know what, I, I, I created, I write songs all the time that are just for me. Nobody's ever heard them. It doesn't matter. I don't need to be recognized as mm-hmm. a great songwriter. I just love to write them and they're special to me. So, you know, not trying to like, I think one thing about creativity that as soon as you get into that flow too, 
and it'll stop your flow. This will stop your flow is once you start to try to think of how I'm going to monetize my creativity. Hmm. And this is a big problem with artists and musicians. You get into the flow, things are going so well. And you're like, yes, I'm going to go start a company. I did this with dresses recently. I was sewing dresses. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to start like an Etsy shop and sell my one-of-a-kind dresses. And then I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that. I love to sew for the first mm-hmm. time in my life, which I never really have before. And I get to do it for me. And mm-hmm. the minute I stopped feeling it, I just stopped. I'm like, now I know I love to sew. I can always go back and sew again, you know, but right now I'm not feeling it. That's okay. I'm going to move on to the other thing that I'm feeling. You know, I'm going to draw for a while. You know, I'm not feeling it. I'm going to stop and go to the next thing Mm -hmm. and just be open to the flow of even where your creativity is taking you just to be open to the flow. That's exactly where you're supposed to be in that moment. And the minute that the tide changes and starts pushing you in another direction, just go in the other direction. Then you won't judge yourself anymore. Right. So I experienced this personally um, with photography. I had been doing photography for like, I mean, you know, now it's like popular because social media and blah, blah, blah. Like I was, you know, I was doing black and white, like back, back, you know, before it was like everyone had a camera, like really Mm -hmm. and truly. And I know I'm young, but I really started really young. (laughs) Yeah. And, um, and I loved it and I was so passionate about it. And, and then I love my mom dearly, but she was like, this is what you need to do. Like, this is, mm-hmm. you can tell that this is like your thing. And, and so then I started a business and yep. I started doing it like sessions and I start and it just almost kind of dwindled away. Yep. And it, like you said, like it messed up that flow, but I would really like to think that you can still like, I mean, you live off your art. So like, I would like to think like, for example, with, with me channeling and, you know, doing readings and stuff, like there was a point when it was just doing it and I was flowing and then I started to monetize it. And it kind of, it was kind of this weird discombobbled thing and all these blocks I had to work through to involve money into my creative, you know, purpose and those kinds of things. Um, but I would like to think, cause like now I've made it, I've, I've kind of made it over the bridge where like, it really doesn't matter if money's involved or not, you know, like it, it, it is my, cre- this is my creative flow. This is my creative force. So I would like to think yeah. that I could even do that with photography. Like I could pick it back up and involve money and it not be a bunch of blocks. Like it, it, I almost felt like the blocks were more with the monetizing were more about my relationship with money than it was with yes. the actual creativity. That's exactly it. And I, and I, you know, that's a really great point to pick up because I, I do make a living off of being an artist. And part of that living has actually been learning about abundance and what abundance means Mm -hmm. to accept it. However, it comes into my life. So sometimes it'll come through a commission. Sometimes it'll come through selling a painting. Sometimes it'll come through doing graphic design, you know, Mm -hmm. or great creating a website. I recognize that as an artist, and a designer and all these weird little hats that I wear that I am abundant in in more than just my artwork. So if you wanted to say, Oh, you know what? I'm going to go pick up some photography sessions on the side, do it while it's calling you Mm -hmm. and people, and then people will come to you. I don't ever look for work anymore. I never look for work. I'm not like making like, you know, hand over fist money. I don't need to. Mm -hmm. I got over that feeling like I needed to be you know, making all of this money. I just accept it's scarcity. it. It is yes. scarcity at its core. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And you accept your abundance. Just accept it. Mm-hmm. You're like, okay, I'm abundant. Look at my life. How could I not look around me and think I'm not abundant? I like know, I have, right? It's everywhere. I have so much hap- so much wonderful things in my life. And, you know, I, I don't have a ton of money, but I don't even care. Like, I don't even actually think about it anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, well, and that's the switch. That's the switch yes. from the scarcity mindset into yeah. the abundant mindset and just knowing and trusting and that you're always going to be held and it's always going to work out. And, mm-hmm. and, um, yeah, it's just, it, it, that, that's honestly a whole other conversation in itself. Like that, that, that switch, um, and, and what that can do in, in not just your creations, but also Absolutely. in your life. Yep. Um, but I would like to, since we are kind of wrapping up here on time, I would like to um, ask you if there are, um, you know, I'd like, um, what I would like is, uh, if you don't mind, <laughs> is three examples, like simple things um, that people don't realize that they're actually creating. And then another um 
uh, three things, um, like three tips if someone is having a creative block? Okay. So one of the most important things to recognize is that um, every time you have any type of interaction with anyone, you're creating a relationship with them. And that's one of, it's probably the most important form of creation that we have is our relationships. And when you learn how to move with that person, accept them as they are, you know, see them as divine creator beings and that they're creating too at the same time, then you learn how to co-create. And co-creation is, is the basis of everything because it's not just us. We're connected to everyone. We are a human collective consciousness. So you're not doing it on your own. So recognize that you're creating a relationship and you're building a relationship always with everyone around you. So my second, um, my second suggestion is to always be trying uh, something new, right? Like recognize that you always have the opportunity for creativity. That, that opportunity is always there. And you also have the opportunity to create the opportunity. So, so you're always creating. Mm -hmm. So when you have the, when you're feeling sort of stagnant in your life, that is literally sort of the universe calling out for you to learn how to be more creative. Mm -hmm. So if you're feeling stuck or lazy or lethargic, that is not you failing in any way. That is like, your higher self knocking on your head and saying, Hey, hey, it's time to get creative. What do you want to do? And it doesn't mean you have to actually physically create something physical. It means that you're creating the opportunity or you're creating the experience in that moment. Oh, so you're always that. creating your experience. Yes. And then the third thing is to be comfortable with creating something tangible and it not being the best thing you've ever done in your life. Mm -hmm. You got to get comfort, be comfortable with just creating anything. So if that means you go and buy a coloring book just to get comfortable with colored pencils again, then you do that. If it means that, you know, you keep looking at the cookies at the store and you don't buy them, you do make them instead. You go on allrecipes.com or something and you're like, I'm going to make a loaf of bread. I don't know what the heck I'm doing. And you get comfortable with the fact that I'm going to go try to be creative and make something with my hands. Mm. And it's okay if it doesn't work. Like it's one of the most powerful things that artists do is that not their art that they create. It's the journey they're on as they're creating. Every artist doesn't paint their whole life because they want the painting to be awesome at the end. They love painting. They love the journey. So if you want to be a creator, you have to learn how to love the journey. So you, you get yourself something tangible to do. So those are ways that you can actually learn how to work with the creativity that is flowing through your body at all times. I literally just got chills all over when you said that. Cause, the, cause that's, <laughs> that's literally life to the core. Like yes. Abraham ticks, Abraham ticks, Abraham Hicks <laughs> <laughs> talks about that so much. Like everyone is so focused on the manifestation. Everyone's so focused on the destination. Everyone's so focused on the tangible evidence, making it into your reality that they forget about the journey. Yeah. And yeah. that's actually the fun and exciting part of it. And like you said, like yeah. painters love painting. They don't like the paint. Like, I mean, they like the painting at the end, but yeah. they enjoy painting, you know, yeah. and, and as exactly. creators, we have to jo enjoy creating our creations. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's what life is. Yes. You know what I mean? You're oh, creating every day. So the good. journey is your life. And at the end, you, 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 you finish this one, you go on and you start another one. Yeah. You know? So the thing is, when you feel a block, it's important not to focus on the block itself. You know, when you're sitting there, say you're a writer and you're staring at that blank page, you don't stare at the blank page and then start writing and be like, oh, I can't think of anything. It's kind of almost like we were saying earlier, like in life, trying to figure out the why. Like you're yeah. staring at the why. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to focus on it. Like you get it, you, you accept the block. You're like, you know what, I'm feeling the block. Uh, really, my closest friend and I were talking about this yesterday. And I said, you know, the thing is, um, when you start feeling like you have that detachment from from actually being creative, you have to recognize that your glass is being refilled at that moment. So you might have depleted your creativity. You might have been doing so much that you used up all of, all of everything that you had. And now you just get a moment to refill your glass. So you just accept the moment. And you're like, okay, cool. I'm not feeling like painting. I'm not going to be mad at myself for that. I'm just going to accept that I'm getting all the downloads right now. And that when it's time for me to make them, use them, process them, whatever I'm going to do with them, 
it will just happen. So yeah, I have the faith that I'm just being refilled and I'm just going to enjoy the moment. I'm just going to enjoy it because I know that I'm connected all the time. I have the faith. So, um, the, the blocks part, like, I don't, I think, you know, you can obviously force yourself to go do something else and all of these things. But when I get the block, I just accept it. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'm not, I have a whole life that I get to live, not just art. It, it's not just my career, right? My, my life is not just my career. So when I start to feel like I'm being maybe having a block or it's kind of run dry, that creativity in that area, it means that another area is calling for me to mm. come be creative. So oh whether that's goodness. in my relationships, um, you know, whatever it is, it's even just hang, taking the day to just enjoy myself. Christine, and I love being, your mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good place to be. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I love it. I love it too. But, you know, honestly, it's like, it's the opportunity. Everything is an opportunity. There's no such thing as a block, really. It's just an opportunity. So if you're not feeling creative at that moment, that means that it's like you got, the, you got the green light to go do something mm-hmm. that you really enjoy that has nothing to do with you know, your job or creating something and you don't feel bad about it. You're like, you know what? I'm going to go hike today. It's a Wednesday afternoon. I'm going to go hike today because I feel like it. Right. And I'm not going to judge it because if I sat in front of my canvas trying to paint, nothing would happen anyway. So why would I sit here (laughs) with that? Right. So I might as well go enjoy myself. So just, you know, it's really about making that choice. One that we're just learning how to choose. That's all we're doing. Mm-hmm. That's what creativity is. It's just mm-hmm. the choice. You're just learning how to choose. So, um, yeah. That's, and that's I, lo- my I love this. It's all, it's all so relatable to life because it is yes. all the same energy. So it's like, it's all the same thing. Yeah. It's all, it's like all intertwined. You can take all of the same, you know, if you are an artist, um, or label yourself that way or whatever it may be, um, you know, you can take those same ideas and ways of being into your life, you know, yes. it, it's really, and vice versa. It, it's really, um, this has been such a great conversation. I don't want it to stop. You know, I don't want it to stop. Um, but I really, really appreciate your time. I appreciate you being here with us. Um, I just absolutely love your energy. How, how, how can people find you? How can they follow you? How can they get a hold of you? How can they see your art? Please tell us. Well, um, if you want to follow me on Instagram, uh, it's christy.litster.art. It's C-H-R, well, at sign, start correctly here, (laughs) at sign, Christy, C-H-R-I-S-T-Y dot Litster, L-I-T-S-T-E-R dot art on Instagram and uh, ChristyLitster.com or on Facebook. If you just search for Christy Litster Art and Illustration, you'll find my page there. And I will make sure to um, drop all of those uh, links in the show notes. So if you guys are interested in checking out any of her stuff, I highly recommend it'll be in the show notes. Just click the link. And um, also just a beautiful human being. So just follow and be in the energy. Um, I love you so much, Christy. I am so grateful to have you in my life. Like, yeah, it just, girl. it's just <laughs> a beautiful, you know, it's like, it's like, this is the beauty of the internet. Like, yes. literally, I can find yeah. people like you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know what? It's so funny because I didn't have a lot of these connections before I really started getting into like spiritual groups on the internet. Mm -hmm. And I think I found all of my true soul connections um, through Facebook. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people have a lot of negative things to say, but man, it has been like the most transformational, amazing experience in my life. Well, it really and has. just like anything, like it depends on how you navigate it. Exactly. It depends on what you do. You know what I mean? Like I yeah. found so many soul connections through yes. social media. And yeah, I mean, I guess maybe it has its its downs, I guess, in some places. But the, the but the payoff is like so much bigger that it's I'm like, so no, I'm not greater. super worried about that. And that's that's my choice with what yes. I choose to navigate in, Absolutely. you know, that, that kind of like dark or negative or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, I'm I'm so grateful to have you here. I'm so grateful to just yeah. know you, to exist with you. Guys, seriously, go check this woman out. She is incredible. Um, you're you're just a blessing on this earth, like it, well, beyond my you. life. <laughs> well, it takes one to know one. <laughs> so oh, we're thank in you it together. So much. We're totally in it together. And I appreciate you and thank you so much for having me on the podcast. It's been so much fun. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You have a great rest of your day, dear. Thank you guys all for listening and uh, feel free to check out Christy's links below in the show notes. Leave a review and um, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks. 
Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you enjoyed that episode. Please subscribe, leave a review. And if this was impactful for you at all, please share it with others. This is how we can help each other. Much love and namaste. Namaste.